So now that you have your own record label, I mean, you guys are up there button heads with everybody. It's like <laughs> all the guys that have been around, nobody's nobody's up there button heads, but you guys, and you got your own does label. It, How are you doing Does it feel different to you? Like, do you feel like you're sitting across from executives right now? Like <laughs> yeah, executive that's musicians? What I was that's what he was executive I know, singers? I, bet. I know. I took my top off right before you got here because I didn't want I didn't want to be too, <laughs> you know, too office like. Yeah. Well, it, it came it came to this point a couple years ago where Kenny and I recorded a surprise record basically we weren't intending on doing a record but we had this great group of songs which let's go cut them we went and recorded them and said let's think sequ- let's sequence these songs see if it sounds like a record and sure enough we went that sounds like a really strong record and so we said all right we're just gonna surprise our record label and say merry christmas here's a new big and rich record uh-huh which they we're, were excited they yeah. were excited to get it but then they come back and go, we didn't expect this record. It's going to be at least a year before we can put any of this music out. So Kenny and I went, well, we can't sit here for well, a we're year. We're getting old. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we can't. Well, the under- right. the we understandable thing year. is when we signed to, when we signed to Warner um, back in 2003, there was three acts on the label. Um, a decade later, there are 13 acts on the label. So even to just put out one a month, yeah. Then it's a one year cycle and if you don't hit right on the right time with it, that can just be putting a couple of singers with great new songs and music they're all excited about. It's like sitting them in a closet and saying, Okay, y'all don't come out and perform the stuff mm-hmm. you've got for a while. You can't do that. Kenny made a great comment when that he said sometimes creativity and commerce have to part ways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I said, you know, that's exactly right, because it's not that they didn't like the music and it's not that we had a problem with them. It just we're not going to sit for a year on sure. what we think is really good songs. And we know we've got a lot of big and rich fans out there and friends at Country Radio that if we give them great songs, we think they'll maybe play them. And so we said, all right, well, we're just going to bet on ourselves and start big and rich records and let's see if we can do it. And sure enough, we're right. on the cusp we've of our a... second back to back top 10 here. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. That first yeah. time in our career that we've ever pushed two songs back to back. Which people don't believe that. They the think Save 10. a Horse and all these songs were. Probably number ones, and a lot of our songs, for whatever reason or another. <laughs> Save Oris got to number 11. Man. Yeah. Well, how but and then was a gold standard for yeah. I don't know how many years after that, but it just took a while for um, people to, to, everyone, to gravitate to that big and rich sound. I you think know? that's it, actually. It took well, how about your second life? I mean, because you really did. You had your first run and whatever, and then, you know, it's like you guys took a break. Now it's... It is like you, you know. This it's is pretty kind, fantastic. It's kind of your second coming. I mean, yeah. Was it once you you go through that first run to where everything's rocking and whatever, and then you have your we got to have some time here. You this, have a couple kids, gotta, a piece, yeah, you know, all that get stuff. married. And, what's and, the what's the difference now for you guys? I mean, like as partners. Well, John and I have been. Of just amazingly matured kicks. Oh, I mean, big time. All that. <laughs> Besides the fact that large so mahogany desk. <laughs> we we both got little boys now. Um, we have we're what's the the real thing to me that, that's changed is just the responsibility level across the board is how you have to be more aware of every little every little part of the business that's going down. I mean, we we as as not only musicians and and singers, you know, we have to write the songs, sing the songs, but then we are we are paying attention to um, everything that's necessary to get our music marketed and out to the people to make sure that all those fans and those new fans that keep coming to the shows keep that uh, they they get our music, and uh, that's a that's a full on job right now as the whole industry is changing and being turned upside down and backwards. Also, media is just changing across the board, so. It- it feels it's it's fun. It's fun I mean, in a whole new way. My Chase first excited. ride was in the '90s with Lone Star. I right. mean, you know, Lone Star was multi platinum act back in the '90s, and I was in my early 20s then. And so that ride happened, and then, like you said, the first book of Big and Rich happened, and now the, here comes the second book of Big and Rich. I think our I think our uh, just overall outlook on what you're doing, why you're doing it, where you want to wind up in the history of music, where do you want to be, and who are you. How do you want to be remembered, and how do you want to really make the impact? That's probably what's changed in our minds the most, you know. Uh, we still go out and tear it up every now and then, but we don't tear it up four or five nights a week anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. We still do. We, yeah. we, we still do every now and then, but we it, played it's more a lot of the bigger... four or five nights a week in the past year. I mean, we're still... We're playing we're just, all the time. 
But it's more of that bigger picture, I think, we're looking at is we're just big and rich when decades pass. How do, what do they say about big and rich? And we knew we had more great songs. We know that our work ethic has never been better. And, and uh, we thought, well, if we can write great songs and if they'll play them and the fans like it, let's keep putting them out. Are those great nights on stage different for you now than they were when you were catching your first wave? Are the nights different? Or when you're having a great night on stage, you know, and the crowd's really with you, are you more aware of how good this is and the just sh- what that means? The shows now the have more. Around? The shows now have more weight to them than they feel like they did in the beginning. When you, if you have one or two songs people know, or three or four, now you know you're playing brand new stuff, "Run Away with You" and "Look at You" and these new songs that are hits. And then you go all the way back and play the 8th of November, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. We still play Wild West Show, our very first single in the show, Come Into Your City. So the show just continues to get more and more, as our record says, gravity around it. You can really feel it. And the audience is everybody from, you know, there's high school and college girls <laughs> down there singing, Baby Blues, cutting right through me. And you're going, wow, they know the song. And then you, and then you see their mom and dad standing there screaming, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. And I go... <laughs> What a cool crowd to have as your mm-hmm. fan base. Really cool. Y'all do a lot of, uh, like when I saw you in Vegas, you got the girls from Deadwood f- coming down with, with curtains wrapped around them. And, <laughs> and you got, uh, you know, rock, Cowboy Troy still. Cowboy yeah. Troy. You got this rock guitarist from from Guns N' Roses, you know, and, <laughs> and you still got a guy up there scratching on a turntable. You know, you've always done guitar. a lot of creative and fun stuff. When you started, I remember you had people painting pictures on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Music Two mafia, brother. Yeah. Music mafia. Music without prejudice and just art without prejudice. And you know, we still uh, we promote that everywhere we go, and it's been really awesome to see what country music's done over the past decade. That um, we've been traveling through it. You know, the, the the format just continues to broaden. There's more fresh sounds coming into it. And, it's in a really good place. And now as record label executives, mm-hmm. of course, we look at it like that. <laughs> yeah, so have you guys ever had, you know, some bright idea that just did well, not work? Well, honestly, when we were opening for Brooks and Dunn yeah. uh, for, I think, 60 shows or something like that, <laughs> you guys, we were watching y'all's show, and you had, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff happening, the blow-up things on stage <laughs> and all that. And uh, we were going to try to see if we could fashion a cannon that would we could load two-foot Fred in the back of the cannon because he's built kind of like a cannonball anyway, and see if we could fire him out into the audience and land him on a net or, I don't know, have a cable attack. We're trying to figure it out. And I think I told you that idea one night, and you said, you might want to think about that because we were going to do that with Ronnie, and you said you had a dummy that weighed like 200 pounds, and you fired it out there. We had two. We we built a giant double-barrel shotgun cannon that was in the back of a huge pickup truck that had a – it was like a giant gun turret, and we – we after I won't bore you with the whole story, but yeah, after a whole year of building dummies, it was a giant, two giant CO2 arms that had a big egg this big on the back that was full of CO2, and then this was a PVC thing, and then we shimmied the dummies down. They were hollowed out like up to their chest, uh-huh. but when we finally got it, was just blew them all to pieces for like the whole tour, and it wouldn't work. And like a giant <laughs> and, potato cannon. And we yeah. kept shooting them and, until we finally got got these dummies that were made out of the things that the the marines have those inflatable boats that they put big outboard motors on that mm-hmm. stuff and and then they just flipped when they came out but they didn't explode so we put sandbags in their shoulders so like 10 pounds of sand so they would fly and they flew all the way across the arena and they would take out two and three rows of people <laughs> you know in the back <laughs> of the college i remember this story yeah, yeah. there was a, a cma performance one summer you know john is been known for smashing a few guitars uh-huh. on stage and and then of course out of the excitement everybody wants a piece of guitar and the stage was quite a bit high with the crowd at that particular performance so as a couple of these pieces sailed out one of these um uh, an un, an, a, a lady who was so excited at the moment she turned her head to look at something else at just the wrong time and got nailed right in the forehead and there was this nice gash her down forehead across her head and by the time she'd come backstage so we needed to meet with her bad yeah and her head's all wrapped up I she think got lifetime she got life, pass lifetime to backstage pass to big and rich and, and she's t-shirt. brought her grandma she still with comes. her and everything still <laughs> absolutely goes. And we're happy to see her. So yeah. I saw your kids on, on TV. What did they think about the reality experience? Uh, my kids, are just they seem to just be happy to get up every day, man. And, uh-huh. you know, they've been around a life that's had so many cameras. 
you know, around their father and, and her mom and their uncle John and around them and everything else. They just have fun with, with any experience like that. So uh -huh. I think they, they really enjoyed it. Uh, the little one, I'd have to say, is he didn't necessarily like having a, a, a mic pack stuck uh -huh. to him. And, and I, I would agree with that. I didn't. For a little <laughs> dude like that, that's a lot to carry around mm -hmm. for a bit. But Boy, they really had a fun, had a blast with the crew. You know, mm -hmm. Lincoln's got a camera up on his shoulders, and he's working it too. If he's not in front of it, he's behind it. You know, right. so um, that was a, a, a just an, an overall fun experience, and for us, a, a great moment to encapsulate our our lives and have a home movie where we can go back and look at. That's you cool. know, that was when that was our then. sons play on the same t-ball team together. They don't. Oh yeah, yeah. how funny. So have you ever had second thoughts about building this great bar in the middle of your house? And granted, you did this. <laughs> you did you this, mean building a great house in the middle of my bar? Yes, yeah, she did this before you were married and had uh -huh. kids and everything. But you were under construction when all that came to be. So what yes. about now? We're How doing an addition. We are? Yes. We're going to have a, actually have a place to live <laughs> instead of just to drink? Well, yeah, <laughs> we are. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a new a new floor going in to uh, add some space. That that place we call it Mount Richmore. You know, um, every every year the family goal is to eclipse a million bucks a year for charities, and for four years straight we've done that. So once we know we've got that set, then it's like, all right, let's book a couple of, of fun nights. We do after the CMAs, we have a party during CRS. We'll have a party, and uh, you know, it's a yeah. fun place. It's kind of like a there's no clocks in there, kind of like a casino. <laughs> so people look at their watch, they go, I probably ought to go. What's it about? About 12.30, and they look down, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I think the, the big indication is through that beautiful glass wall and view of all of Nashville, as you know you're supposed to go, as you see the start building to get bright start lighting back up, outside. Go, okay. <laughs> the buildings are lighting up. Oh, well, there's a sun coming up again. Yeah, and I'm getting the wrap, but before you go, we're going we're gonna to air this uh uh, right before Christmas. So oh, cool. what are you guys doing for Christmas this year? Wow, it's going to be friends and family, friends and family. My my parents are getting a little older up there on the farm, and um, we're actually going to be heading up there uh, real soon with the little boys to be with them all. My siblings are coming down. I've got a, a new baby niece. I'm looking forward to seeing her and um, just to spend time, be, try to get out and see all my friends and family, man. And go ho, ho, ho a whole lot and spread a lot of <laughs> holiday cheer everywhere. And, uh, you know, hope for peace on earth and good everywhere. Uh, everybody in my family still gathers around Granny Rich. Oh, that's great. So Granny, How's she doing? She's great. Yeah. She's, uh, she'll be 84 in February. You know, she does eight hours a day, five days a week at Rich Alterations Shop. They're in Ashland City, Tennessee. No help, no assistant, no nothing. Just one lady doing it, you know. And uh, just she's hitting on all eight cylinders. And so... Uh, Everybody gets together. We go to Granny's house, and she doesn't have a very big house, so we just pile in. There's the card table sitting on the side. People are eating in their lap. But uh, Granny will fry four or five chickens, you know, and, and, uh, and you know, we wind up doing some target shooting and stuff like that with the uncles and cousins. So Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry get Christmas. Out the guns. Redneck a, Christmas. You know, it's about it. this time of year that we always uh, start out or somewhere in our shows we have to sing a little bit of holiday music, and it typically goes something like this. Oh, holy cow, we're, we're about, about to, to have, have a party. party. <laughs> That's how we get it going. <laughs> Love it, guys. Kids, hey, you're the man, brother. Yeah. Thanks for there having us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.